Roman Pluchak. Okay, and uh, so it's really a big pleasure to be here today with you, and I'm really thankful for the Partnership for Change for making it happen for me to be here today. And I'm really happy that I can talk a little bit about my country and the problems that we have. Uh, and so you heard of uh, Shared Societies program, and uh, I want to talk a little bit in the context of that. And so Ukraine strives for the ideals of shared society. But there are lots of different problems that stop my country on its way. Personally, I may see a great difference between people that I meet every day. Uh, when I go to the university, I meet young, energetic, smart kids who really want to do best for their country and who really want to change something. Uh, but at the same time, there is lots of factors that try to stop them. And uh, if we go... So the first one is difference between people ideas, ideals uh, between East and West. And so first of all, it comes up from our history, uh, from religious views and political views. Uh, the second reason is that many simply are not engaged in or concerned about the country. And the last one is the government. Uh, but if we have such a problems mixed all together, it shields people who really want to change something from doing it. In my opinion, that is one of the reasons why the protest started in November. Because the government didn't want to listen to the people. And for Ukrainians, mm, integration into the European Union was a first step to this shared society that we really wanted to reach. And uh, it was the beginning of what we have in Ukraine right now. But there were lots of other reasons that led to this situation. And in my opinion, the, way, the main one is uh, the economic situation in Ukraine, which was and still close to the economic default. The main problem is that salaries are very low and the prices are as high as they are in the EU. And people cannot get food for their kids and uh, uh, they do not have jobs, uh, again, to provide, uh, to get a salary and to pay for that. And uh, I think that we should recognize that the corruption is one of the biggest problems of Ukraine too. Uh, and that is why we hear about the previous officials stolen billions of dollars from Ukraine. Uh, and. Uh, it's only just an official data that we have. Uh, in Ukraine, we have a class oligarchic model of the economy. And as you probably know, during the presidency of the Yanukovych, uh, much of wealth was stolen from the country and brought to the offshore zone where it cannot, cannot be returned even if proven that they were stolen. And another problem is an unprofitable businesses that we have uh, that need subsidies and they drain the budget of the country and these enterprises usually do not have even the profit from it. And the worst thing is that most of the subsidies are taken by oligarchs and the enterprises won't even see this money. So they won't see the support from the country. Uh, uh, we have the same problem with the investments because nobody wants to invest into Ukraine because it is uh, economically and politically unstable. And another problem is that politicians are working for their businesses and not for their country. In Ukraine, we have just an illusion of democracy. Hopefully, soon we'll have a president election, which probably will help us at least a little bit. And people feel that there are no honest candidates to vote for that they feel that they have to choose the least evil because there is no good. Candidates' promises of economic stability and so on are just empty words that do not mean anything. 
but as you know, corruption cannot exist if there is no support of below, of the people, and uh, each person involved with it, everywhere and every day. People give bribes to doctors, teachers, employers, politicians, judges, and so on, and that is why we have such a high rate of the corruption in our country. And that is the reason that Maidan or protest started, because uh, people wanted to change the situation and live in a stable, democratic, economically strong country where they do not have, have to, they do not uh, have to give bribes to some people and they will be sure that they can afford to buy food for their kids for the next day. Due to the chaos that followed the departure of Yanukovych, there began a struggle for the control in eastern, Russian-speaking part of the Ukraine. Many people believe that Russia is being an aggressor. The only problem is that there is no direct everything, evidence of who is doing it. Who are those armed people? It would be enough to prove the connection of this green man to Russian army, but it's not been done uh, conclusively. If Ukraine could prove the international aggression, aggression from the Russian side, it could prove the ref that the referendum in Crimea was unlawful. And the things that are happening in the eastern Ukraine right now are unlawful too. And uh, if you want to hear what can be done to change the situation in Ukraine, in my opinion, it is time. Yesterday, uh, not yesterday, but a couple of days ago in a conference of the uh, uh, Oslo Center for Peace, we heard saying that democracy it's not coming in one day, it's not coming in uh, one week, it is a long period of time. And uh, I think that that's the only way, the only thing that can help Ukraine right now is just the time. Because now almost all politicians that are in power are businessmen and people who have gotten there through different criminal actions. We need new, young, energetic patriots who first of all will not have enterprises and businesses in their hand. And we need people who want to work for their country and build a shared society. Because you may see that lots of things need to be changed in Ukraine and years of hard work are coming. In my opinion, international community does not do enough to support Ukraine and help it. It needs stronger sanctions on Russia to make them feel actually the effect of them, and it needs investment and financial support along the lines of Marshall Plan and uh, to help to build the Ukraine its own strong and stable economy. And when I told, to, you know, I told my mother that I'm coming to this conference and I'm going to speak about Ukraine and what can be done to change something, she told me only one thing. Give a man a fish and he eats it for a day. Teach him how to fish, and he eats for a lifetime. Thank you.